This is Cindy Mitchell, and she'll explain why she's here. Hi, my name is Cindy. Um, I'm the sister of Mario Romero, who was murdered by Vallejo police on September 2nd, 2012. Uh, he was shot over 40 times, sitting in his car doing what most of us do every day, minding our own business. He was unarmed, and he was murdered. He was shot through the, top, through the palms of his hands, in his face, and in his mouth. He didn't have to do anything to be murdered by police, and that's why I fight, and that's why I continue to fight, because he, sitting like any one of you, inside of his car, he was murdered when police attacked him and shot at him over 40 times. I'm stumping the ground every day because my brother's life mattered. All of our lives matter, you know, and it's important to know that police will kill you, and when they kill you, you become the enemy. My brother was murdered, and he was... He was crucified. He was shot through the palms of his hands and his body was stolen from the crime scene. And his body was held for over 30 days. Okay? So not only do you have to worry about loss and having your loved one's life stolen, you have their body stolen, you're, having, you, you're, you're robbed of your right to grieve, you know. And a police-issued training weapon was planted inside of my brother's car because he was unarmed. A lot of people don't know that. They don't know that the police will kill you and they will plant a gun on you and they will say that they fear for their lives. You know, they will lie on you. And not only will they kill you, they will assassinate your character. I'm here because it's important. My brother's life was important. Every day, every day, I think about how my brother's life was stolen. Every day. So I'm stumping the ground because it's important for everybody to know his killers. It's important to know how he was murdered. You know, it's important to know that he could have been any one of us sitting inside of a car. It's important for us to know that we have to stick together because any one of us can be under attack. And we could be labeled whatever they want to label us because they get the last say so on our lives. We must trust our own instinct. We must do our own research because it's important to know that the police will kill you and they will demonize you. They will say that you did something. They are creating chaotic situations and they are blaming us for it. You got to understand who has the most incentive to keep crime going on in, in the communities. These police are employed and when there's no crime, there's no police. So they have a vested interest to keep crime rates up. I'm out here fighting for you, not just me, not just for my brother, but for each and every one of you because your lives matter, all lives matter, black lives matter. It's important to know that black lives matter. Yeah. It's important to stand up. It's important to fight for justice. It's important to say, stop this. We are not taking this shit anymore. Yeah. We are tired of the injustice. We are tired. We are tired of stump stumping these damn grounds, demanding justice, demanding equality that we should already have. We are fed up. I thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me. Because I'm out here and I'm not going anywhere. Thank you guys. A quick, a quick, a, a quick piece of information. Because she touched upon something that reminded me. When the police force in New York went on strike, the crime, crime rates went down. Realize that. When 5,000 police officers stopped doing their job, people would expect more of crime to happen. It was the opposite. They perpetuated crime. They're not here. They're not mentors. They're not counselors. They're not here to help you. They're here to arrest you. They're here to suppress you, oppress you, and control you. They're here to make sure that you do not rebel against the status quo or the corporations that, that control it. Um, real quick, Carrie and Dion are going to come up. These are more people who have lost loved ones to police terror. And then, and then we'll talk about their... Uh, thank you. Hi, my name is Dion Smith Down. I'm the mother of James Rivera, who was murdered in Stockton, California. And I've been traveling coast to coast, west west, and to make an awareness that my 16 year old was shot 48 times with AR 15 inside of a garage. Um, I came out here, I normally bring my autopsy pictures when I came, but I know the fight is not really focused on my son right now. We want to fight for this young lady who was shot down in this city. And I want people to know that we need y'all to stay on this battlefield because it's happening every second. 
You know, it, 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 every time you turn around, if it's not in Stockton, it's not in Oakland, or Sacramento, it's somewhere. And we need to start coming together. We need to start raising money, sending families and friends to go and support the other city because a lot of families can, can't afford to travel. Can't afford to tell their story. I've been fighting five years now trying to get justice for my son. I have not received anything from my son. And it's going to be five years in July 22nd. I have heard anything about my son. So I've been coming to Oakland. I've been coming everywhere to get to support, to shut my city down, to let them know that I'm not going nowhere and we be familiar with this face. Now, they shot my son. They um, it called a pit maneuver. They knocked him into a mailbox Knocked him, knocked him into two mailboxes, knocking him into two car garage when they opened fire 48 rounds, 18 into his body. You know, and no one should have to die like that. You know what I mean? Then they said the reason they shot him, that the van looked like it was backing up. We know that's a damn lie, because how could you back up if you had a, a, a wreck that went into two garages? So we're not going to let them tell me anything. I, I was just like other, every other mother. I'm nervous right now. Because I'm, every time I come, uh, uh, we, we, we see families hurting, you know what I mean? And they don't know what to do because I was saying in that same position five years. So I understand the family. I understand how it is to always hear another victim have been murdered and they use that same shit, justify. I am tired of hearing that word justify. That's giving the green light for the next city to kill or the next police to kill. So I'm going to let my husband finish talking, and thank y'all. Definitely. Uh, taking the streets is one of the uh, key crucial parts that we, uh, as people, stand up because, you know, uh, having videotapes and, you know, text and information and stuff like that, when you see something, is really not enough these days now because it's gotten out of hand. So what we need now is people to stand up like we're doing today. You know, it don't matter. If it's not your child, it's no. Don't matter if it's not a family member of yours. Don't wait for uh, yours to get killed or or um, murdered, and uh, and then stand up. The time is now, and we families happen to be the ones who are on the front line. We didn't ask for this. This was given to us, you know. And so we was just like, if you haven't lost anyone through police brutality or through any injustice, any any killing then you, you wouldn't really know like we were. We didn't know, and then it happened to us, and then now we're in it. So we just want to say um, this is part of a uh, head in the direction that we need to go in for change. It's people standing up and voicing their opinions and saying, you know what, it's no longer uh, my problem. It is your problem. It's our problem. It's your problem. And if somebody dies in this community, it should affect you, especially if it's police, because we know there's too many murders being taken place all over the state of California and beyond. We stand with many families all over the all over the California. Um, we just got back from Atlanta, well, where we did a, a, a national uh, conference, uh, 2015, where uh, we implemented a, the uh, hashtag shutdown A14, and you can get involved in your city and put this out there, go online and uh, look that up and share it because those this, that's the next time you'll be able to really stand. So you got time to plan from here to April 14th. And shut it down. It's business no usual, as, as usual. No, no, no work, no school, no nothing, no shopping, none of that. And if we want to make an impact, if we want them to hear us, these are things that we have to do. So as people who are fighting and people who have lost, no, have have not lost loved ones, you can still be out there. You don't have to be on the front line, but you can also be on any social media that you choose and share the information. You know, some people can't get out there because of their job and things of that nature. But just push the information, you know. And we appreciate it. And, and, and much respect and love and our condolences to uh, Yvette uh, Henderson and, and her family. And we stand in, with them in solidarity. Thank you very much. All right, so I've had a request because this is a... Okay, uh, next ad. Uh, my bad, I, that, that request was canceled. Okay, so real quick, I know that there were some, some more families because I'm just emceeing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm filling in time real quick until another family member or families can't come up and speak. But I, I want to touch upon... God damn it. Uh, I'm trying to find a good spot to stay. Okay, this may be it. Because I hate that squeaky sound. All right. So um, real quick, well, I was talking about this at the other, at the other place where people think that police are here to help us 
or somehow that the police can be reformed. See, the problem is the police were never here to help us. To protect and serve was a marketing scheme because the police were put together to suppress insurrectionist movements at the time, at the turn of the century and the industrialization. But the, the police that weren't brought to control black people from the plantations, the overseers and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the slave catchers were brought into the Bay Area to police the black folks that came out of those areas during, after slavery. But in major cities, during, during the industrialization, the corporations worked people so bad. Entire neighborhoods and cities were, were standing up against these corporations and they made police departments to oppress those people. So the police were never made to protect and serve. They were made to oppress and suppress people and control people to make people toe the line. See, we need to understand police, aren't, police are not mentors. They're not counselors. They're not teachers. That's why we have those things. And we need to invest, and the, and the cities and communities need to invest into mentorships, counselors, teachers, mental health. It's, it, there's more people killed because they're mentally ill than, for the simple fact they're aggressive, black, and mentally ill. Those people are killed. So, real quick.